One of the most important things you can do when developing software is to ship early and ship often. The sooner you release your project, the sooner you can get feedback from your users and iterate and improve your creation. With that in mind, I'm going to take you through how to deploy your Gleam apps for your users at three different scales. We'll start by getting things running locally for your friends and family, take a quick detour through pushing to a server for 24 seven uptime, and then I'll show you how to live up to Gleam's promise of deploying type safe systems at a global scale. Sounds exciting, right? We might as well get started. The first and most important thing to understand when deploying a Gleam app is what a Gleam app actually looks like. Unlike other languages, Gleam has two completely different build targets, Erlang and JavaScript. Instead of compiling to a static binary, Gleam will compile to one of these languages and can then run on the respective runtime. While this gives Gleam devs access to an absolutely massive ecosystem and allows type safety across the stack, it does mean there are a few extra options when deploying. Let's start by exploring the build output for a Gleam project. This is a really simple project that just prints out every prime number, waiting a second between prints. The actual details of the program here don't really matter. I just wanted something I could compile to both Erlang and JS. We can compile this to JavaScript by specifying the dash dash target JavaScript flag during Gleam build, or by setting our target to JavaScript in our gleam.toml file. When we run this, our program will be compiled into the build dev JavaScript directory. This will contain a directory for each package in our project, which each hold a JavaScript file for every module in the package, as well as the Gleam JavaScript prelude. The entry point for our app is in the directory named after our project, primes in this case. In particular, we want the main function in the primes.mjs file. If we rerun the build command with target Erlang or specify the Erlang target in our Gleam Toml, we get something slightly different. Like with JavaScript, we get a subdirectory for each package in our project under build dev Erlang, but this time each one has an eBIN directory. These contain the compiled Erlang modules in the form of .beam files. That's all great, but how do I run all this? Good question. If you're only running on your local machine, you could, of course, just use Gleam Run. On the other hand, if you want to be able to work on updates without affecting your running instance, you'll probably want to keep things separate. If you're using the JavaScript target, it, this is easy. Simply copy the contents of build dev JavaScript to your desired location and run the main function in the project name.mjs file mentioned earlier with your favorite JavaScript engine. In theory, you should create a separate module to call the main function from, but you can also just append a main call to the JS module and run the file directly. And voila, you're up and running. Erlang is a bit more tricky. While you can run your project with the Erl CLI tool, you have to manually include all the eBIN directories for all the packages in your project and a couple of other flags. It's not a big deal, and you can use a glob pattern to include the binaries, but it's a bit painful nonetheless. Thankfully for us, the Gleam team have thought of this and given us the option of exporting an Erlang shipment. A Gleam Erlang shipment is basically a stripped down copy of your build dev Erlang directory, along with an entrypoint.sh file that runs Erl with all the relevant flags for you. It's nothing groundbreaking, but it's a nice touch that makes things a lot easier. To generate this, run Gleam export Erlang shipment. You'll find a new Erlang shipment directory under build, which you can just copy somewhere on your machine and run using the entry point script and you're all set up. This is how you can run your apps locally. It's also the foundational knowledge you need to deploy your Gleam app somewhere that isn't your home PC or laptop. Sometimes though, you wanna keep your deployment and development environments completely separate. Maybe your program is particularly resource hungry or you just want to be able to use the same port across dev and prod. There are many ways you could get files onto another machine to be run. You could copy them over with FTP or SCP or you could clone your Git repo on another machine, but then you'd also need to install Erlang or a JavaScript runtime on that machine. If this suits your use case, you probably already know it. And if it doesn't, your best bet would be to use Docker. How you Dockerize a Gleam application will depend on the target platform for your app, but the main steps that differ are the image you use and the commands you use to start the container. I'm going to show you how to create a Docker file for Erlang, but you only need a few tweaks for a JS version. The list of available containers is on GitHub, and I'll include example Docker files for both Erlang and JS in the code for this video. That's in the description, just next to that subscribe button you need to hit. Start with the Gleam Erlang Alpine base image for the Gleam version you want to use, then copy in your Gleam project. I'm going to use a work deer called build here, but you don't have to. After that, it's simply a case of exporting your shipment, copying to a slash app directory, and deleting the source code once you're done. The entry point is the entry point.sh script we mentioned earlier, and the command is run. The entry point script also accepts shell as the command if you wanted to run an interactive session in your container. Now that we've got our Docker image, it's 
time to stick it on a server somewhere. You could do this by renting a VPS from a cloud vendor like AWS, Linode, or Hetzner, but I'm going to be deploying this on my home lab, which was graciously provided by the sponsor of this video, Zima. This is the Zima Board 832, a single board server with a quad-core Intel Celeron N3450, 8 gig of DDR4 memory, and 32 gig of onboard storage. It supports up to an additional four terabytes of storage via SATA or via NVMe with a PCIe adapter card. The box comes with a nice little thank you card, some stickers, and a power adapter. It's got plenty of I.O., including a four-lane PCIe 2.0 bus, two USB 3.0 ports, and two gigabit LAN ports. The board is cooled passively and is also pretty handsome, but my personal favorite feature is the software. It ships out of the box with Casa OS, an OS by the people who make the Zima board, and it just works. You can install Docker apps from the Casa App Store, or just pull down your own Docker images and run and monitor them easily. I particularly like the single button RAID 0. I found a couple of old SSDs lying around, and now I've effectively got a 600 gigabyte network drive. You can use the Zima board for anything from a NAS to a Plex server, and I've been loving mine. Fancy getting one? Go to ihh.dev slash Zima, or click the link in the description. at ihh.dev slash Z-I-M-A. So, back to deployment. Once you've got your Docker file and your server set up, you'll need to get your image over to your new machine. Again, you have a few options here. You could host your image on a container registry, use Docker's remote host to build it and run it remotely, or you could use my favorite method, which is Coolify. Coolify is an open source, self-hostable platform as a service. It's basically Vercel at home. You can hook it up to listen to pushes to your Git repo, point it at your Docker file, and set a couple of config parameters, and you're off to the races. It'll build and run your Docker image for you every time you push, and even allows you to have custom domains and preview builds all linked to PRs. Setup is a single command, but I'll leave it up to the Coolify docs to explain the rest. Links in the description. But what if you want to go bigger and serve your app to the whole world? Well, setting up the Docker file was actually about as much as you need to do, so we're almost there already. The easiest way to deploy globally is using a service called Fly.io, a longtime sponsor of the Gleam language. Get started by creating an account, then download and authenticate the CLI following the instructions in the documentation. You'll need to add a credit card to your account, but Fly typically waive fees lower than five bucks a month. Then, set up your app by running Fly Launch. It should pick up your Docker file automatically, but if not, you can use dash dash Docker file to specify a path. By default, Fly will deploy at the closest location to you, but you can change the settings if you want. Otherwise, let it run and soon your app will be deployed. If you want to go global, you can add machines in more regions using the fly scale count command with a dash dash region flag. For example, this will add a machine in Los Angeles. And now I'm generating prime numbers on a planetary scale. Epic. So we've taken a game app from our local machine and turned it into the next global software sensation. Not bad for a single video, eh? What did you think? Where would you like to deploy your Gleam apps? Let me know down in the comments. Oh, and don't forget to check out the Zima board at the link in the description or by going to ihh.dev slash Zima. Thanks again to Zima for sponsoring this video. And if you want to see how Gleam could potentially replace a lot of your stack, that's the video on the left. But if you fancy putting yourself at the mercy of the algorithm, YouTube's recommended video is on the right.